Hello, I'm Mariam Namazi in London. Our main story this hour, US officials have admitted that a drone strike in Kabul last month mistakenly killed 10 civilians and not ISIL fighters. An investigation found the August 29th strike killed an innocent aid worker, along with nine members of his family, including seven children. The strike was one of the US military's final acts in Afghanistan before ending its 20-year military operation there. I am now convinced that as many as 10 civilians, including up to seven children, were tragically killed in that strike. Moreover, we now assess that it is unlikely that the vehicle and those who died were associated with ISIS-K or were a direct threat to U.S. forces. I offer my profound condolences to the family and friends of those who were killed. This strike was taken in the earnest belief that it would prevent an imminent threat to our forces and the evacuees at the airport. But it was a mistake, and I offer my sincere apology. As the combatant commander, I am fully responsible for this strike and this tragic outcome. Shahab Rotanzi joins us live now from Washington. Important, very important conclusions in that investigation, Shahab. But also, what is the significance of the way in which this information came to light? That's the big question. Would there have been an investigation had the New York Times happened to have still a substantial team on the ground in Kabul who could talk to those involved in the strike, the victims, the survivors, and say what actually happened? Because otherwise, clearly, this would have gone down in the annals of history as, in the words of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a righteous strike against ISIS. K, but we should be clear here, though. This isn't some new phenomenon because the U.S. Is no, no longer has eyes on the ground. This is a feature of the war on terror that we've been covering since 2008. It's particularly a feature of signature strikes in the drone wars that were introduced by George W. Bush, but then really embraced and pioneered by Barack Obama. And the point of those is when a drone operator sees behavior that has the signature or bears the signature of militant activity, you bomb. And the assumption is that everyone killed was a combatant unless it can be proven that they weren't a combatant. And how often is there a full New York team's uh, team on the ground to check all of that? This is what the Pentagon's been relying on all these years. We, who knows how many times this has happened in the past. So to, to then, I think I can see now that the discussion in the media here in the U.S. is, oh, well, doesn't that, doesn't that mean that the, the U.S. shouldn't have left Afghanistan? We, don't long, we no longer have eyes on the ground. This is what over-the-horizon war looks like. It's kind of missing the point. That's a red herring. B civilians were being killed even when the U.S. had eyes on the ground, wherever they are, through through drone wars and through 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 the, the the rules of engagement that the U.S. U.S. already has, and we know anyway that civilians were being killed, whether whether the U.S. had you know have people there or not, whether it's by drone or whether it's by the troops who are in fact stationed there. The New Yorker had a great piece just last week talking about all the untold hundreds of civilians who were being killed rather routinely by the U.S. who we don't know anything about. So this is just another example. Not so much it's not so much relevant to the pullout from Afghanistan, but once again relevant to the rules of engagement in the U.S.'s drone wars, which, of course, Joe Biden and certainly President Obama and President Trump, actually, he escalated them enormously, too, are relying on increasingly out, in, instead of having a large footprint on the ground. Thank you very much, Shahab. Shahab Ritansi in Washington. And just one other story we're following this hour. France has recalled its ambassadors to the United States and Australia as part of a massive diplomatic...